let's have a big old chat about supplements. And of course, I'm saying big chat, but in reality, we're going to miss out the vast majority of supplements. We're going to miss out protein supplement. We're going to miss out vitamin supplementation. We're going to miss out herbal remedies. What we are going to talk about here is we're going to talk about four specific methods. Now, the first one I'm interested in talking to you about is that of creatine. So let me sort of explain and describe it to you first, and then we'll sort of evaluate it as a, as a methodology. So first of all, we get it from, not necessarily from this big tub, but we get it from meat and fish. Now, you're probably relating creatine already to the phosphocreatine system, right? But the key thing to realize is it's a bunch of amino acids. Okay, it's a bunch of amino acids. So it's protein-based in, in essence. And we tend to take it as a supplement, at least, in the form of what we call creatine monohydrate. And I'll allow you chemists to educate those in your class, in your A-level class, as to what monohydrate refers to. That's for another day. Now, what I want to do here is I want to talk here about the advantages and the disadvantages. So here's my pluses, the positives in green. First of all, it up arrow increases PC stores. Now, that's no surprise that that is really, really popular with explosive power athletes, right? Second point, it's up arrow. It means it increases the length, the length of high intensity work so in other words if we've got to sprint let's say in our football match or our rugby match or whatever it is we can do that at the top pace for longer now that is a massive advantage to all kinds of athletes and as a result of both of these points we've got an increase well actually only one of them we've got an increase in max explosive strength so the explosiveness explosive strength so explosiveness elasticity and the sort of the speed endurance aspects of performances become better so start to think about your games players who would really benefit and there's no surprise this by the way completely legal um legal not illegal it's completely legal this is why this is really popular with sort of elite level footballers games players this sort of thing now there are negatives so i'll put my little red negative dash in here so what are they first of all they can increase weight which is not obviously necessarily good uh, depends what you're trying to achieve and it can cause an increase in water retention. And of course, those two factors are related. But those negatives are relatively minor when you take into account the relative nature of the positives. That's why it's so popular. Now, where we're going to go next with this is we're going to look at what we might use called a dodgy white powder. It might not be what you're thinking. This here is sodium bicarbonate. Now, if you look in your Nan's baking cupboard or equivalent, um, you're going to find this stuff. That's where it is. I mean, effectively, this makes cakes rise, right? It's an alkaline. So a couple of things we want you to be aware of. First of all, it reduces acidity. Okay, so if we take it as a supplement, it's actually going to make a sort of an alkaline contribution to our to our homeostasis. Secondly, um, it neutralizes lactic acid. Well, that's good, right? That, that works well. I'm going to talk to you a little bit about the specifics of this in a second. It neutralizes lactic acid. In other words, we can actually call it mopping up lactic acid. And its chemical formula is HCO3, okay? So HCO3, that's what the bicarbonate ion is. Now, this is the key point I want to get to. It binds with hydrogen. Now, you won't be thinking, hang on, James, what's that got to do with anything? Well, the important thing to realize here is that when we form lactic acid, lactic acid breaks into hydrogen, let me be specific, hydrogen ions and lactate. And it's these hydrogen ions that are actually fatiguing, so we can remove them. And this bicarbonate ion, it joins with the lac with, with hydrogen ions and it, fo it forms something called carbonic acid. Again, you chemists will know way more than me about this if you're doing A-level chemistry. But where I'm interested is this carbonic acid can be converted very easily to H2O and CO2. And what do we do with that? We breathe it out of the lungs. So we take our fatiguing lactic acid and we basically breathe out the fatiguing bit. Well, that's pretty good. And sodium bicarbonate can do that job for us. Let's look at the positives and negatives. So positives first. Why is this a good one? Well, it causes an increase up arrow in what we call buffering. Now, you might be thinking, hang on, Jimbo, what's buffering when it's when it's uh, buffering is this process here. We call it buffering. So that's what we mean. As a result of this bu buffering, this supplement is able to delay oblet. In other words, we can work at higher intensities aerobically for longer. And the other point, I mean, to be specific, you can get a greater intensity before obla. So what I'm trying to get across there is that it's not just that obla comes later, let's say in a temporal sense in terms of time, but it's a higher intensity. So of course we can work for longer aerobically at a higher intensity. Now there are negatives. Let me put my neck thing. This is my negatives color. Here's my negatives for sodium bicarbonate. First of all, just nice simple notion. It's really unpleasant. And I'll be specific with this. It's not an easy thing to take because it causes a tummy ache. So think about your lovely acidic 
stomach acid being neutralized by this fairly strong alkali actually it doesn't really do you that much good temporarily now i hate spelling this word so give me a second it can cause that old beige experience the diarrhea sorry i've written over myself there so it can cause diarrhea it can cause vomiting so again you've got to be willing to put up with this if this is the impact you want and the other one oh it causes cramps and i don't mean like muscle cramps don't be specific specific we're talking about stomach cramps it's going to cause so you know some pretty grotty old business in there right two down two to go let's keep it going stick with me you lot now what oh god dear that looks really tempting so what we've got here of course is we've got coffee but this is the supplement caffeine. Can I stress that this used to be relatively illegal? It's a stimulant in sport and large quantities of it used to be illegal in most sports. It's now completely legal. And we can take it in the form of coffee. We get it in the form of Coke. I'm talking about the soft drink. We get it in the form of pills. I'm talking about caffeine pills. We get it in things like energy drinks. Uh, we get it in things like even chocolate. Oh, oh even chocolate has some caffeine in it so these are all where we might derive this from oh i should say as well we could get it from tea tea's got less caffeine in it than coffee typically um but of course it, it's a stimulant now this is the positive impact so first of all this is my positives it, it up arrow it increases cns activity so our central nervous system becomes more, more sort of alert and ready to go and let's make that point we get an up arrow an increase in alertness well that's pretty damn good if we're a boxer if we're a games player if we're an mma fighter we also get a down arrow seems negative right but in reaction time in other words we react faster we get to work quicker it actually increases get ready for this one up arrow aerobic capacity and you're like hang on sims what do you mean it increases how is that have a cup of coffee and I can run for longer. Well, specifically, what caffeine does is it increases fat metabolism. Fat metabolism. So you become better able at absorbing fat at higher intensities of exercise. And particularly, fat becomes more soluble in the blood. So your solubility of fat in the blood becomes better. And finally, if we take all these points together, this helps to preserve glycogen. So you know that limited glycogen store we've talked about before? Well, of course, if we can do more work with lipids, with fats... Then that's going to mean that we can we can use, we can effectively save our glycogen for higher intensity of exercise. Now there are some negatives. Let's get my negatives over here. The first one is it's a natural diuretic. Remind yourself what diuretic means. It gets rid of water in your body, makes you pee, dehydrates you, all of that stuff. That can actually be positive if you're doing things like weight cutting, but you know generally that's not what we want. Um, it also <laughs> makes you alert, so it can cause sleep problems. Insomnia is, a, is an inability to go to sleep, so that can be a real problem. And also just bear in mind that. Uh, Caffeine's acidic, so it can give you things like stomach problems. It doesn't sound like you can put anything in your stomach, really. Um, so not our bicarbonate, not too much coffee. It is an acidic st structure. So there's our evaluation of that one. And to, folks, to finish it off, I've got a lovely plate of carbohydrates here. And we're going to talk about the process of glycogen loading. Now, there's a bit of de I don't know, there's a bit of detail here, so bear with me, okay? So this is a seven day process those people out there taking this tutorial a bit like me who you know might be playing a football match tomorrow so have a massive bowl of pass the night before that's not what we're talking about here so let's take our seven days on day one which is effectively seven days out from a competition so day one right so there's a first day what we do here is we deplete glycogen stores you know remember those liver and muscle glycogen stores so how do we do that well we train right and we wouldn't consume any replacement glycogen then on days two to three, so on the second day of the process, on the third day of the process, we're going to up, increase fat and protein. Okay, so we're going to eat more fat and protein, but we're not going to take on glycogen. Then what we're going to do is on day four, so this is day four here, what we're going to do on day four is we're then going to deplete glycogen again. Again, we're going to do that by training. Okay, and finally, what we're going to do is on day five to seven. This is where the carb loading comes in. We eat a carb-rich diet. And the whole idea is overcompensation of the body. It's actually, there's a nice term you can use. It's called supercompensation, which sounds like you're going to get a big check to just whack in the bank or something to run over your cat. But <laughs> where'd that come from? But this is supercompensation. You overcompensate and you store more glycogen, okay? So... <laughs> I can actually see my cat in here. It's a sunny day today. He's licking his paws on the porch just out the window from where I am. Anyway, positives about this message. Positives about this message. We get 50 
percent higher glycogen stores. So that two hour store of glycogen now becomes up to a three hour store, potentially 50% extra. We take longer to reach exhaustion. How impacting is that for so many athletes? Longer to reach exhaustion. And finally on the positives, we get an increase in endurance. Well, of course, that is wonderful for anyone who's an endurance athlete, but there are some trade-offs, there are some negatives we must be able to evaluate. So what are they? We might experience hypoglycemia, which is very low blood sugar levels. And of course, we'd be tending to do that in this phase here, right? Because we're not taking on carbohydrates. That could lead or that could be associated with lethargy. Lethargy means tiredness, folks. People could become, and do, by the way, irritable. Okay, so people get triple grumpy. Thirdly, when we start taking the glycogen again, we might experience water retention. Okay, so we get a little bit of bloating effect when we start taking glycogen again, and therefore this can cause gastrointestinal problems, basically stomach issues. Gastrointestinal problems. Sorry about that. Okay, so we've covered our four supplements. The last one's actually a method rather than something, but you know what we mean. There we go. Loving it. Cheers.